Let's jump right in with our single card discussion on what I think is probably my favorite Black 4 drop, Creature, <laughs> before we have fights. So let's start off just by reading the card. Gonti Lord of Luxury is 2 black black for a legendary creature Aetherborn Rogue. That's a 2-3 with Death Touch. That is not enough, sir. Nah, that's pretty bad base. But he has, when Gonti Lord of Luxury enters the battlefield, look at the top 4 cards of target opponent's library. Exile one of them face down, then put the rest on the bottom of that library in a random order. You may look at and cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. And you may spend mana as though or mana of any type to cast that spell. I love this card, man. I have fallen in love with this card. It is probably one of my favorite EDH cards that I wish included white or blue just so that you could flicker it more. Yeah. And in cube, it works surprisingly well. It really does. So the base stats are not impressive like you had made a joke about. You know, a 4-drop 2-3 with Death Touch is not good. The fact that it has Death Touch is actually pretty nice because it's one of those that it trades up with everything. Yes. The 3 toughness is not great. If it was four, but, it would be stonewalling a lot, though. Yeah. As it is, it still blocks two ones all day, which is an all right way to go. So it's one of those, that, like, it's not, the base is not great, but... But it's acceptable. It, the fact that it does have death touch does mean that it's like, you're not, you're going to at least trade, yeah. no matter what happens, basically, which is what you sort of want on this, like, defensive, this is not an aggro card, this is your, like, defensive, I've sort of stabilized, but not quite... It is very hard to make this card not a two for one. That's true. Because it's always getting its man in combat, and it's always getting you a card from their library. Now let's let's now that we've got the base naysay out of the way, let's talk about why this card is actually bonkers. Let's let's not oversell this. I'm going to oversell this. <laughs> I love this magic card, ladies and gentlemen. I love it a lot. Yeah. So this guy's got like a seven paragraph long ability, but it can be summed up as impulse your opponent. You may cast that card with any mana. You can technically whiff if your opponent had four lands on top of their library. Don't cast it after you've double plow under them. Yes. <laughs> Aside from that, although it is kind of funny because then you get rid of all their lands and they've got no lands in play, which it, it's funny in its own way. So but maybe do. Maybe do that anyways. <laughs> that could be an entertaining. But yeah, so it's like you said, it's impulse on your opponent. A lot of the hesitation on this card comes from people saying... What if I get bad cards? What if, like, I can't control the outcome of this? What if my opponent's playing bad cards? Well, we're in cube. Yeah. There aren't bad cards in cube. As long as the cube's well-balanced, there should be no bad cards. Now, there are whiffs. There are like, definitely you could some. hit land, 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 war elf, and rampant growth or something, which isn't very thrilling. Yeah, and I mean, there's definitely some issues with, like, synergy between the decks, where it's like, if you're playing against a super aggressive deck, and you just get, you know, land and three one-drops that are not lightning bolt, it's not great. It's not great in that case, but at the but same time... You're playing against an aggro deck, and, and you, you just... still get a body you get, for yeah, one you, mana. Exactly. So... That will probably trade with all of their bodies for one mana. Yeah. So, and most of their bodies for two mana. So that that is one of the major, like you said, naysayers is like, you can't control it because it's your opponents, but... And these are bad cases that we're bringing up. The average to good cases on this are actually nuts. Yeah. In a control mirror, this can be so backbreaking. Yes. Like, oh man, does it feel good when you grab their counterspell, then counterspell their own stuff with your double black mana. Or you grab their consecrated sphinx you grab aetherling that you're gonna cast for black black blue red red the fact that you can cast whatever it is for any mana is actually really nice yes not only because like if you couldn't you couldn't cast a lot of things but it actually does make a lot of really strong cards like cryptic command are sort of balanced around the fact that it's blue 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 you don't care anymore. So that balance of it's a four drop, but it's actually a really strong one because there's that like color balance going on. That doesn't mean anything to your to whatever card you grabbed. So you were talking about it in like control mirrors. It's also really good against like mid range decks for the fact that you know the mid range deck's probably gonna have some mid range card that you're gonna want, be it a kill spell or just like a, a dude. And this death touch two three actually slows down mid range decks quite a bit. So back on 
cryptic command real quick there is a conspiracy card called unexpected potential which has hidden agenda you name a card whatever you may spend mana as though it were any color to cast spells with that name right that card was really strong when we were playing with the conspiracy package which weaves in and out for when we play with it but yeah we've taken it out for a while to test a bunch of new cards the card is strong to draft on its own applying that to anything always feels good overall i think this card should be played in more cubes especially if you're a fan of stories. Yeah, and that's actually one of the big things that I want to say is this is not the best 4-drop in black. Yeah, there's a difference between the best 4-drop and my favorite 4-drop. But this one does a really good job of creating fun stories, and they are actually pretty exciting stories when stuff happens. And even even if it's just after the game, your opponent's like, what were the four cards you looked at? Yeah. Kind of thing. Even if it's just that and it's not some ridiculous blowout. Yeah. That's still an it's interesting... It's even more fun when they know that that lightning bolt they were looking for is one of the cards you tucked. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is just an exciting card. And all that's about it other than even if you don't want this in cube, you should play it in EDH.